Every day we coexist with evil. We witness the darkest side of human behavior. The suffering caused by one individual to others is something inherent in our society. As dedicated investigators of the criminal world, we're on a mission to uncover the most shocking crimes and get inside the minds of those who commit them. I am Lucas, and today I bring you another unreal true crime. The Case of Morgan Chantel Nick Morgan Chantel Nick was born to Morris and Colleen Nick in Ozark, Arkansas, on September 12, 1988. She was the couple's first child, and later, the family expanded with the birth of two more children. Morris was known to be a loving and kind father. Those who knew the couple said they embraced their parental responsibilities, doing everything in their power to make life easier for their children. Though Morris and Colleen initially seemed happy, challenges soon surfaced in their relationship. When Morgan was six, they decided to separate, which ultimately led to a divorce. The process, however, was amicable, and they never fought over the custody of their children. The children primarily lived with Colleen, a devoted mother who always put her children first. Morgan and Colleen shared a close bond, spending most of their time together. Morgan excelled academically, despite her young age. Having just completed kindergarten, her family could already envision her thriving in elementary school. Personality-wise, Morgan was a shy child with a big heart. She loved apples and was fond of cats, leading her mother to allow her to have one as a pet. Despite her shyness, Morgan was actively involved as a Girl Scout and enjoyed playing with other kids. She dreamt of becoming a circus artist or a doctor when she grew up. On June 9, 1995, Colleen received an invitation from a friend to watch a minor league baseball game in Alma, Arkansas. Thinking Morgan might enjoy watching other kids play, she asked her to accompany her to the game, about 30 minutes away from their home. It was a night game, starting at 9 p.m. Upon arriving, the stands were already packed, but Colleen managed to find a spot for herself and Morgan. However, six-year-old Morgan soon grew bored and began fidgeting with her shoelaces. Despite being a calm child, usually hesitant to engage with strangers, two older kids approached her. They introduced themselves as Jessica and Ty, aged eight and ten respectively. There are different accounts of what happened next. In one version, Morgan asked her mother if she could play with Jessica and Ty, but Colleen initially declined. Concerned about the unfamiliar surroundings and the packed venue of almost 300 people, Colleen was hesitant to let Morgan wander off. However, Colleen's friends urged her to let Morgan play, assuring her she was being overprotective and that Morgan would be fine. Eventually, Colleen relented. The kids mentioned wanting to run up a nearby hill to catch fireflies. With the game nearing its end around 10.30 p.m., Colleen allowed Morgan to go, but only for a short while. In another version, when Jessica and Ty invited Morgan to catch fireflies, Morgan's innate shyness made her decline. Yet Colleen's friends thought it would be good for Morgan to interact with other kids. Colleen then persuaded a reluctant Morgan to go with them, even if it meant leaving her mother's side. What's certain is Morgan left the stands with the two children. While Colleen tried to keep an eye on them, she got distracted when the baseball game ended and teams came into the stands to greet their families. The next time Colleen looked for the children, she saw Jessica and Ty returning without Morgan. Concerned, she immediately asked them about her daughter's whereabouts. They replied that the girl had disappeared while everyone was emptying sand from their shoes, leaning against Colleen's car. Subsequent investigations revealed that while Jessica and Ty sat at the front of the vehicle shaking out their shoes, Morgan was alone at the back emptying hers. Another significant and worrying detail was that the children insisted they saw a creepy man talking to Morgan before she vanished. Confused and anxious, Colleen immediately raised the alarm 
and the adults present at the baseball field helped her search the nearby areas for her missing daughter. However, hours passed in the search without results, and Colleen decided to report the incident to the local police. Those who knew Colleen highlighted her kind nature and how she was always willing to help those in need. Therefore, when she needed support in searching for her child, many showed their solidarity. Additionally, being a devoted mother who always looked out for her children made the community even more outraged at the kidnapper or kidnappers who took Morgan away from her family. On the day she disappeared, Morgan was a beautiful girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. Before going to the baseball game with her mother, she had attended her Girl Scouts activities and was wearing the organization's green shirt, blue denim shorts, and white tennis shoes. Another distinguishing feature of the young girl was that she had five silver crowns on her molars, a type of cap used to cover and protect a damaged tooth, which were easily visible. When the police were informed of the disappearance, they immediately began their investigation. Officers and local volunteers organized numerous search mobilizations, while detectives went door to door seeking evidence and witnesses. Since Jessica and Ty claimed to have seen a man speaking with Morgan before her disappearance, the police compiled a detailed description of the suspect, who was said to be between 23 and 38 years old with black hair sprinkled with gray, and he had a mustache and beard. Witnesses also reported seeing a faded red pickup truck nearby with a mismatched white camper shell that seemed too small by a couple of inches. They noticed possible damage to the back right corner of the vehicle. Some claimed the truck had Arkansas license plates, but the plate number wasn't recorded. Additionally, upon reviewing home videos recorded at the baseball field, investigators confirmed the existence of the suspect and the aforementioned red truck. However, unfortunately, the recordings were too grainy to provide a clear image of his face. Once Colleen reported Morgan's disappearance, she called her ex-husband and informed him of the situation. Morris seemed devastated by his daughter's disappearance and expressed willingness to cooperate with law enforcement. Surprisingly, during the initial investigation, the girl's father became a potential suspect as some evidence suggested he acted as a low-level drug dealer. He also reportedly had a criminal history, including assault and property damage charges. From the beginning of the investigation, Colleen was willing to cooperate with law enforcement in every way because her only wish was for her daughter to return safely. However, when investigators initially suspected Morris, her ex-husband, of being involved in Morgan's disappearance, she felt the police were making a grave mistake. She defended him, claiming he would never harm their children. Fortunately, the police soon ruled out Morris as a person of interest and focused their attention on Clifford Joe Pullen, rumored to be his drug supplier. This individual had a criminal record, and in addition to being arrested for marijuana possession, he had also been charged with first-degree rape of a minor in 1995, suggesting he might be capable of kidnapping. Nevertheless, authorities quickly cleared Clifford of any suspicion and stated he was not involved in Morgan's disappearance. Although the police received numerous leads at the time, none led to Morgan, and months, and then years went by. During this period, information from Albert Harvey, a resident of Stuttgart, Arkansas, seemed promising. He claimed he had seen a man fitting the suspect's description with a blonde child trying to enter his truck. Interestingly, Albert was able to identify the suspect from the sketch, and the police used all their resources to scour the area. However, as hours went by without any leads, law enforcement began to doubt his claims. They subjected Albert to two polygraph tests, which he failed, and he eventually admitted to lying. The case went cold, and as time passed, the search was no longer for a six-year-old girl, so the existing photos of Morgan seemed insufficient. To provide a solution, in February 2001, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released an age-progressed photo showing what Morgan might look like at 12 years old. The intention behind such photographs was to widely disseminate an updated image of Morgan. This way, if someone spotted a teenager resembling the image, they could alert authorities to verify if she was the girl abducted in 1995. 
Leads in the case were dwindling. Although police vowed that they wouldn't stop working the case until they found Morgan, the trail was growing cold. Searches would continue to be held sporadically, and detectives still followed up on every tip they received. But nothing brought them any closer to finding Morgan. The next lead came in January 2002, when a tip led investigators to search a property in Logan County, Arkansas. A witness claimed that Morgan was buried there. This testimony was so detailed and specific that the police acted on it. However, despite using search dogs and scouring the area thoroughly, nothing was found. On August 14, 2005, ABC's Extreme Makeover, Home Edition, and John Walsh, co-founder of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, addressed the topic of missing children, highlighting Morgan's abduction. Colin and Morgan's siblings received a new home after their family home was damaged by a water heater explosion. In November 2010, federal investigators searched a vacant house in Sparrow, Oklahoma, after receiving a tip from a confidential informant. Sparrow was about 25 miles from Alma, and the property they searched had once belonged to a convicted child molester who was currently in jail. Although investigators had nothing linking the man to Morgan's disappearance, they searched through the home looking for possible DNA evidence that might indicate Morgan had been there. Unfortunately, they didn't uncover anything related to the case. In August 2012, two convicts, identified as Tonya Smith and James Monhart, were accused of trying to buy some of Morgan's personal documents, including her social security number and birth certificate. While they were found guilty of document forgery, investigations determined they weren't involved in Morgan's disappearance. On December 18, 2017, police conducted another search on a property in Spiro. Some reports said it was for an unrelated investigation, while others believed it was connected to Morgan's case. Notably, the search dogs signaled to a well on the property, which then became the focus of the search. After an intense 24-hour search, investigators left the property without finding any evidence. In November 2021, detectives identified Billy Jack Lynx as a potential suspect in Morgan Nick's abduction. An Arkansas resident, Billy was a registered sex offender who had been in and out of prison since 1992. Reports suggest he had a typical upbringing, with no apparent signs of deviance. He served in the U.S. Army during World War and later worked for an airline in Dallas before returning to Arkansas. Despite seemingly staying out of trouble, he was arrested and charged with sexual offenses in 1992. Two months after Morgan's 1995 disappearance, Billy attempted to kidnap an 11-year-old girl only eight miles from where Morgan vanished. Witnesses reported he drove a red pickup truck, aligning with descriptions from Morgan's case. A week after Billy's arrest, investigators searched his truck, finding hair, fibers, a mass sheet, rope, a tarp, insulation tape, and blood on one of the seats. The samples were stored for future analysis, but it's unclear if they were tested then. Shortly after his arrest, Arkansas State Police and the FBI tried to question him about Morgan's case, but he invoked his right to an attorney and refused to talk. Regarding the 11-year-old he tried to kidnap, Billy proclaimed his innocence, but he was convicted of sexual solicitation and sentenced to six years in prison in 1995. Billy remained behind bars until his sudden illness and death on August 5, 2000. In 2021, a news channel aired a documentary titled Still Missing Morgan, Arkansas Police mentioned they were still seeking information about the red truck with an attached white cabin. The documentary led to over 200 new tips, but none have resolved the case. The revelation about Billy Jack Lynx was the last major update, but Morgan's disappearance remains an active investigation with the police continuously receiving tips. Meanwhile, Colleen pleads with law enforcement to follow every lead, refusing to rest until his daughter is found hoping for her safe return. This case has profoundly impacted Arkansas and even influenced the naming of the Amber Alert. The Amber Alert system began in 1996 after the disappearance of Amber Haderman in Arlington, Texas. Amber 
is an acronym for America's Missing, Broadcast Emergency Response, managed under the Department of Justice. The Morgan Nick Amber Alert is Arkansas's name for the program designed to alert the public when a child goes missing. This program is a joint effort between local law enforcement, media outlets, and civic groups to raise awareness about potential abductions, thereby increasing the chances of locating the missing child. Activating the Morgan Nick Alert involves the participation of all Arkansas law enforcement agencies, along with more than 250 local radio stations, TV networks, and other media outlets. This information is quickly disseminated to all parties, enabling them to broadcast details about a possible abduction widely. As of 2023, the case remains unsolved. Since Morgan's disappearance in 1995, her father, Morris, has opted for privacy, preferring not to discuss his daughter's case publicly. In contrast, Morgan's mother, Colleen, is vocal about her ongoing efforts to bring Morgan home. Colleen lives in Alma, Arkansas, where she runs the Morgan Nick Foundation, assisting families dealing with abductions or missing persons. Beyond advocating for these families, Colleen spreads awareness about daily dangers faced by children and offers detailed resources to help parents and teachers understand online safety basics and parental control apps. Despite extensive investigations that have yielded thousands of leads, there is still no concrete information on Morgan's whereabouts. The FBI and local communities have offered a reward of $60,000 for information leading to the recovery of Morgan Nick and the identification, arrest, and conviction of those responsible for her kidnapping. Thank you for supporting my work. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. See you next time on Unreal True Crime. Goodbye.